Thank you for the invitation to address the, your meeting today, and I'm very sorry I can't be with you. Within the European Parliament, we've been following with some concern what's been happening in Baluchistan over the last few years. And it's clear there are very major problems there which need to be addressed. The European Union is involved in that in a number of ways. It's clear that as an area of large geographical population, but yet a small human population which is shifting all the time, that there are enormous challenges. We're aware, for example, that Pakistan's progress on Millennium Development Goals is very much affected by what is happening in Baluchistan, where we can see problems with issues about literacy, particularly the engagement of girls in education, where we still have tragic cases of polio, one only very, very recently, and also health outcomes are really poor. So it's clear there's a real need for progress and development. And yet we also know that some of the people in the region with high educational qualifications, doctors, lawyers, find themselves in many cases forced out of the area and forced to seek refuge elsewhere. In my part of London, for example, I have a considerable number of people of the Hazara community who are living in London because they no longer feel safe to live in Baluchistan. So there are big issues about development, about access to resources, and about human rights. In terms of the access to resources, the, re the ongoing floods create, have created real problems in terms of water supply. And we're now hearing about the actual water table decreasing within the area, which brings with it a whole set of problems, not least in terms of rural development where the European Union is engaged in actually trying to improve sanitation, improve water supply and rural development in general, and not least in terms of the refugee problem, where people, there are so many now who find themselves displaced into Baluchistan, which in itself, if not managed properly, actually creates further instability. The human rights situation too is of enormous concern. This was raised by us in the last resolution that the European Parliament did on Pakistan, where we raised the question of human rights abuses and in particular enforced disappearances with particular reference to Baluchistan. Because there's going to be no political solution there until we actually see the rule of law and universal human rights in operation. That people who are seeking for self-determination and trying to do that peacefully should at least be able to put forward those arguments without feeling that their lives are in danger. When we were in Pakistan as an official delegation from the European Parliament just a few weeks ago now, we raised some of these issues. The census that's desperately needed, not least in terms of democracy and you know, working out how the resources of different regions should be allocated. We also raise the need for an independent human rights commission so that people feel that they do actually have somewhere they can go, a trusted organisation. We're concerned about the reintroduction of the death penalty. When we were there, that was being talked of only in terms of terrorist cases, but now we see it being extended again to cover everything. That is really worrying, where we may well see people who, because of their political activities, find themselves on death row and facing execution. That's no way forward in terms of universal human rights and people feeling free to exercise their other rights, which they now have under the international conventions that Pakistan has signed up to as part of the trade agreement on GSP+. Plus with the European Union. We also raised concerns about the introduction of military courts for issues of terrorism and who will be defining what constitutes a terrorist offence, which is again of particular reference and relevance to Baluchistan. So we are aware of many of the problems that are there. The European Union is engaged. Our ambassador to Pakistan was in Baluchistan only early in March to talk about how we can help in terms of rural development, education, the increasing questions about resources and sanitation. 
So we're aware that there are many problems that Baluchistan faces. It was put to us that this is the sort of the dirty war that's going on, which needs attention. We'll be following closely what happens with Pakistan's national action plan against terrorism. Many of the measures in there are very much to be welcomed in terms of tackling hate speech, in terms of wider education, in terms of trying to move away from the very limited education offered by so many madrasas to something which actually offers a real opportunity of literacy and progress. So the Parliament will be watching, the Parliament will be engaged in these issues, many of which are being raised in your meeting today. I hope it's a successful one and we look forward to hearing about the outcomes and the recommendations. Thank you.